We are live. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to another show of H two O. I'm Mario Brundle, and my co-host, good old Mitchy boy. How are you, bud? What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's going on, Mario? Not much, not much, buddy. It's it's been a, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. You know, I know we didn't really announce this time what we're going to talk about. But I know everybody's feeling the inflation like crazy, right? I mean, you, we, we go into the gas station and we're filling up our little, you know, European Beamer for, you know, 140 bucks now out here in California, right? We're over, we're over six bucks a gallon. I think yesterday I filled yep. up at 629, you know? That's, that, crazy. that's crazy, right? But, but I think this is pretty obvious, right? Fuel is obvious. Mm -hmm. Trucking rates are obvious because of the fuel. I want to talk a little bit about what's not so obvious, which is warehouse space and, and how does yep. inflation affect that? You know, because I had a conversation with some of my friends this, this uh, yesterday, actually, and, mm -hmm. and I was asking them, I said, hey, what contracts or what, what leases are you currently in? And they said, yeah, we have a lease and we've been and we thought we were protective, protected in that lease. And apparently there's like some small print that they are allowed to increase up to 10% within the lease term still, you know, which is not that much, right? In, in, in the grand scheme of things, right? If you look at the rent for apartments and stuff, they, you know, Florida went up by 56% on average between March, 2020 and March, 22, which is crazy. But the interesting part that came out, what I want to see what you think about this is that the new contracts or the new, um, and leases that are being signed are being signed at almost double what they were before, right? So now imagine you're a warehouse operator and let's say you pay out a buck or a buck 20 a square foot and all of a sudden that new negotiation is at the twos, 220, 230, 240, 250 per square foot, you know, mm -hmm. which essentially will double your transloading rates, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and will double your storage rates, you know? Uh, which mm -hmm. is which is really really crazy to me you know what what, what do you think mitch i think that um first and foremost i knew inflation was coming a long time ago i've been posting it for it for well over a year um now that we're finally seeing it um i mean warehousing has always been i had it actually i did an episode on how important warehousing was a year ago and how it would be important for us today um yeah. and i do agree warehousing prices are going up um not just warehouse pricing but you got to remember labor itself is going up so it's a whole aspect of of different parts of we'll call it the variable that continuously change warehousing right. unfortunately has always been a very low yielding product it's always been something as a value-added service to helping out customers i think tables are turning i think space is becoming a lot more valuable um here in chicago we have a little area down by the airport we call 90210 um where it's all of the forwarders and What's funny is, you know, I do go around looking at, you know, facilities um, and their rates are just, I don't want to say they're not normal, but they're just rates that I look at and saying, my clients aren't going to pay that. But that's not really the question that I need to ask myself, right? I shouldn't, that's not the comment I should say. I should say like, I got to start educating my clients and letting them know that rates are going up and this is how we do it. Um, yeah, but the rates in, in Chicago, I mean, my warehousing rates have almost doubled uh, the rates for pallets. Um, but even that, just trying to get people to come in and work for those full hours, Mario, has been has been a problem. I mean, is staffing also a big issue in California still with these warehouses? Yeah, absolutely. I was just about to say, you know, the, the, if, if you really look at the transload, you know, which I consider, you know, when a, a container comes in, it's being unloaded and it then sits in the warehouse, right? Um, we are north of $1,500 for a transload. A transload three, four years ago what? was yeah. Fifteen hundred dollars for a transfer in your, California. Your, your, your your local hall. Everyone's leaving. Yeah, dude. The, the local crazy. hall. The local hall today to a warehouse is north of eight hundred dollars, right? Where that local hall was maybe three or four hundred bucks. You know, yep. pre COVID. You know, yep. but so so you're north of fifteen hundred dollars, right? But then I'm yep. really wondering, like. Like, who is going to pay all this, right? It, are we going to try to actually move away from warehousing at the ports and move more into warehousing in the inland, right? I mean, we are we are sure. part of a, a big project in Arizona 
um, to build an inland port in Phoenix, right? Which is the second mm -hmm. largest city on the West Coast, you know? And, and one of the conversations that we had was, you know, if the storage rates are, or the, 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 the warehouse spaces are 70, 80 cents a square foot, and out here in LA, they're above two, you know, is it maybe driving business essentially away from LA, right? Um, and and that's, that's crazy to me because at the end of the day, those consumer products that are, you know, transloaded from Home Depot or Lowe's or whoever we might have, ha we might have, right? Think about it. Before the transloading rate was six, seven hundred dollars. Now the transloading rate is fifteen hundred dollars. It's almost a triple increase, right? Um, that's yep. just crazy to me. You know, do, 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 is the same thing happening in, in Chicago? Do you think? You know, previously where a lot of the transload happening in New York and then moved by regular truck into Chicago. I, obviously, Chicago has been a big container ramp for 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 decades. You know, but do you yep. see the same trend there? We do. Um, we're seeing a lot of shippers getting smarter. They're looking for warehouses that are not next to the airport, that are not next to the ramps, where they're actually looking at maybe the cost of the transportation part is higher, but the warehousing is lower. And yes, they are moving further into the northern suburbs, almost almost bordering uh, Wisconsin, um, where they can get great warehousing rates. Um, right. You also have uh, the Amazon, uh, you know, uh, big distribution center up in Kenosha. So a lot of companies are getting smarter. They are moving out. And it's funny you bring that up because I do a ton of transloads in California for a client. Um, and we've actually moved them out of the Los Angeles area and yeah. started going into different areas. Compton, I, I've yeah. got warehouses in Compton. Um, and I, yeah. I mean, people think it's bad, but Compton's not all that bad. You might go down no, and sketch and, and, and yeah, there's a lot of really big facilities like in the Inland Empire. That's just probably an hour, hour yep. and a half away. Um, yep. that's booming. Right. And I think that's just yep. the reason why I think Phoenix is going to do really well, uh, in the long term. Yep. It's, I, I read something. It's one of the second or the, one of the largest growing cities in the U S right now. Because a lot yep. of the Silicon Valley companies are moving there currently, like the Googles and Amazons yep. and so on. You know, um, I think yeah. Mario, I think that a lot of companies also um, started too early and started paying premiums in these areas where they're figuring out that maybe it was a bad idea. Um, because remember, well, you sign those leases; they keep you in for what three to five years minimum. I mean, oh, minimum five years. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you have all these you have all these companies that are opening up. Well, we're in the port, we're by the port. And in reality, you don't even need to use them. You could go a couple of miles down the road and pay a third and maybe pay 15 or 20% more on the trucking, but you still save. It's a big mistake. And I think that um, shippers are getting smart, Mario. No, absolutely. It's really going to be interesting to see what's going to happen around the port areas. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know the, the people that, bought the warehouses obviously absolutely killing it right now you know yes uh, which which uh which kind of brings me to my last subject which i know is not really logistics related but really in in quality uh in the united states with with the inflation worries me a lot right and, and i'm i'm, and I'm yes. curious what is really the end of this right um you know the rich are getting rich the poor are getting poor um you know, and, and I think you're going to have a similar yeah. situation happening in the logistics fields, you know, that many people can't afford a double rent increase, you know, because like you said, the warehousing is such a tight business already, such a yes. low yield business to, to begin with, you know. Yes, so I'm, I'm curious to know what's uh, what's going to happen. You know? I, I don't know, Mario. I think that um, you're going to see a lot less players in the market. Um Obviously, with the cost of just everything going up, um, the consumer is really going to suffer. The consumer yeah. at yeah. the end of the day is really suffering. And you hear it. You hear it. Um, and you bring up a really good point about people um, and how it's affecting, how the wealthier are getting wealthier and the poor are getting poorer. The problem is that in this country that we call the United States of America, I'd say are near close to 80%, if not higher, are in poverty. Um, and when right. I say poverty, they do not live um, like they live paycheck to paycheck. And these are the yeah. realities. Um, they would, they, I, you know, it was funny because before we went on air, I read um, a poll and I, I know polls are skewed, but it's saying that 90% of the U.S. population does not have enough money in their savings for a 
major car repair. Right. Um, that's that's a wake up call. Um, we're just causing more problems. And when you see these things of inflation, there's a couple of things that happen. One is crime will go up. Um, you're going to start seeing more crime. Um, there's going to be a lot more discomfort um, in areas where um, opportunities are less. It's, it's a chain reaction. And we're all going to yeah. feel it, Mario. And it's sad. And you know what? Um, I know that we've talked about this before, but I strongly still believe that a major player in why the products are going up so much is yeah. because you're, you know where I'm going with this, Mario. The ocean carriers cannot expect to increase their rates 10 times and not expect for us as a consumer to feel it. It's completely no, absolutely, and, 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 and I think it's a, and I think it's across the entire supply chain, right? Uh, I mean, to kind of absolutely. wrap up this conversation, you know, yeah, sure. inflation, we feel it. I, I think actually, the supply chain is a major driver of our inflation. You know, that's right. Um, uh, there was an that's article right. uh, published in the Wall Street Journal that uh, had three major ones, but one of the major ones was supply chain, right? If, if a freight rate yep. is fifteen hundred dollars uh, pre-COVID and it's you know fifteen thousand post COVID, <laughs> you know, that's yep. one of them. Then you have the, um, uh, the warehousing space that's increased and the trucking with the fuel, right? So it's, it's almost like a, a, a triple, a triple header, right. Uh, on, yep. on, on the true cost to the, to the end user, you know, so. It's going to be an interesting one. And then, uh, let's see what happens. I mean, we'll keep track of this. We'll continuously keep bringing this up so that everybody's aware our customers, um, just before we end this, I just want to thank all of our viewers and all of our supporters that have been really supporting Mario and myself uh, after almost over a year, uh, almost darn near two years um, on YouTube. We have finally, finally hit 2000 subscribers. So wow. thank you. That's thank awesome. you. Thank, you, so thank you, Mario. We started with 86 when we started and we finally hit 2000. So it's really, really exciting. People are finally starting to pick up. Guys, make sure that you tune in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central time and 11 p.m. Eastern time. Never Western time. Western time. Um, think, yeah. Western time every week so that we can give you some more information of what's going on in today's logistics market. What do you think, Mario? All right, man. Have a good one. All right. You got it. We'll talk next week. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.